This evening we'll return to Revelation chapter 4, not Revelation chapter 5, but in Revelation chapter 4, and we'll be looking at verses 2 through 11. Revelation chapter 4, verses 2 through 11. If you would please turn there in your Bibles, and I will read the Word of God. Revelation chapter 4, beginning at verse 2. Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, the throne was standing in heaven, and one sitting on the throne. And he who was sitting was like a jasper stone and a sardius in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald in appearance. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and upon the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting clothed in white garments and golden crowns on their heads. Out from the throne came flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was something like a sea of glass, like crystal. And in the center and around the throne, four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. The first creature was like a lion, and the second creature like a calf. And the third creature had the face like that of a man. And the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within. And day and night, they do not cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. And when the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders will fall down before him who sits on the throne and will worship him who lives forever and ever and will cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you our Lord and our God to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and because of your will they existed and were created. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for bringing us to this text. The book of Revelation is not uh, an easy book to interpret. It is not an easy book to preach, Lord. So I pray now that you would you would help me, that you would help me to explain the text, that you would help your people understand, that you would be here by your Spirit, Lord, to apply these things to us. And may you be honored in the preaching of your word. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Have you ever had your children ask you a question that was way above their head? Or any child, maybe if you don't have children. A question like, how do cell phones work? Would you say, well, in telecommunication, long-term evolution is a standard for high-speed wireless communication for mobile devices. I'm pretty sure that's not how you would start explaining how cell phone works. You'd probably say something like this. This is what I would say. My phone sends a signal to an antenna and from that antenna to the other phone. Pretty simple. But to the point, yet my my children, and I'm guessing other children, young children, I have young children in mind, wouldn't understand the complexities of how a cell phone actually works, or how, how a radio actually works, or a television works. So, so what do you do? You simplify it. You, you, you take the question and you answer it in terms that they would understand. That's exactly what John has done. That is exactly what John has done in Revelation chapter 4. He has taken... The vision that he sees in heaven, and he explains to us 
what he saw and what he heard. And I just want to take it in three steps. So first, you have the throne. So we'll look at the throne, the one seated on the throne, and uh, the things emanating from the throne and under the throne. Then we'll look at the heavenly beings, and then we'll look at the worship. The throne, the heavenly beings, and the worship. But first, in chapter 2, and uh, verse 2, John says, immediately, I was in the Spirit. Remember last week, we, we just looked, or the week before last, we looked at verse 1. And John says, after these things I looked, after the things in chapters 1 through 3, he looks and he sees this door standing open in heaven. So heaven is open to him, and the Lord Jesus Christ calls him up. And he is going to show him what is going to take place after these things, or what will happen in the last days, as we examined that phrase at the end of the verse. And immediately after he's called, he is, John says he is in the Spirit. John is taken up, whether in the body or apart from the body, we are not told. So is he physically transported into heaven or is his spirit some way taken to heaven? We don't know. But what we do know is that John is not only peering through this door, but, but he is ushered in to heaven. What is clear and consonant with the rest of Scripture is that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the agent of revelation. So in First Peter, chapter 1, verse 11, He is the Spirit of Christ who indicates through the prophets. In Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 21, we are told that He is the one who carried along those men who wrote Scripture. And even today, the Spirit is at work, not giving fresh revelations or prophecies or dreams and visions, but the Spirit is at work to help us understand the will of God revealed in Scripture. But Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 2.17 that we have received the Spirit who is from God so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. So this revelation John receives while in the Spirit, whether physically transported to heaven or spiritually, it is not clear. But the exalted Christ calls him, and he is taken by the Spirit into heaven to see this magnificent vision. And in verse 3 then, he sees one sitting on the throne. And this one who was sitting on the throne was like a jasper stone and sardius in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald in appearance. And this verse and the end of chapter 2 uh, really draws us back to Daniel. Turn to the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 7. And in Daniel chapter 7... Where in Revelation chapter 2, you have a throne sitting in heaven. In Daniel chapter 7 verse 9, da uh, Daniel is looking and he keeps looking until thrones are set up. And the Ancient of Days takes his seat. This is... This is uh, the vision in Daniel chapter 7 structures Revelation chapter 4. 
And here we see this one sitting upon the throne. And Daniel's, uh, John, excuse me, John's description of this one, uh, note, as I said last week, the use of similes, was like, he is like. And he is there sitting upon his throne. Now, this is the place from where God rules over all of history. Look at Psalm 47. This rule is not contained in heaven. It's not that God only rules in heaven or that God only rules over his people. No. In Psalm 47, verse 8, it says, God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. God rules the nations. But look at Psalm 99. Psalm 99 expands this idea. Psalm 99. And in Psalm 99, beginning at verse 1, The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The strength of the king loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. The Lord reigns from heaven and his reign is universal. There is no one to stay his hand. As Daniel tells us in Daniel chapter 4, verse 35, or Nebuchadnezzar, really this is coming from the mouth of Nebuchadnezzar, all the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing, but he does according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and no one can ward off his hand or say to him, What have you done? Now, if you put uh, Revelation chapter 4, if we turn back there, in Revelation chapter 4, he's writing to the churches in Asia Minor. And those uh, chapters where he addresses these churches, they are going through various trials and tribulation. Some are currently in the midst of battling heresy, and sin in the church. Others are going to enter a period of time of tribulation. And John is given this vision. He is called into heaven. He is taken up into heaven by the Spirit, and he sees the Father sitting upon his throne, ruling and reigning over history. Every event that is occurring, that has occurred, that will occur to those saints in Asia Minor, has been orchestrated by the God who sits enthroned in heaven. And believers today can know with confidence that everything and anything that happens to them must pass through the eyes of him who sits on that throne. He sees your circumstances from that throne perfectly. In chapter 4, verse 3, Revelation chapter 4, verse 3, we we begin to get a description of this one. And it says that he was like Jasper. He was like Jasper. If you look at Revelation chapter 21... Revelation chapter 21 explains further. In Revelation chapter 21, it says that this jasper was crystal clear and pure. Revelation chapter 21.
21 and look at verse 18. The material of the wall was jasper, and the city was pure gold, like clear glass. Look down at verse 21. And the twelve gates were the twelve pearls. Each one of the gates was a single pearl, and the streets of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. This... uh, Uh, Jasper stone is a crystal, it's clear, and what most commentators say, it is a simile that describes the purity and the perfection of God. The next stone, it says that he was like a sardis. This is a, a reddish stone, red for the red hot holiness and justice of God. And then there is a rainbow emanating. And it's not a a regular rainbow. It's an emerald rainbow. Many commentators say that this is a throwback to the rainbow that God makes the sign of the Noahic covenant. covenant. And so, this throne is a throne where Sovereignty reigns, holiness, purity, yet all of these things are administered with mercy and justice. And God is sovereign, pure, holy, just, and merciful. The book of Revelation makes it very clear that the judgment is coming, but it will be a just judgment. The people of God will be able to sing as the psalmist does in Psalm 82, 8. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for it is you who possess all the nations. The people of God will be able to say this with great joy. If you go back to Revelation chapter 4 and verse 5, you have further descriptions of the throne. It says that lightning and sounds and peals of thunder emanate from the throne. As when God appeared on Sinai in Exodus 19.16, and when he appeared to Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 13, lightning and thunder are displayed. And what the lightning and thunder communicate is the power and the might of God. When this occurs in the presence of men, they shake and they tremble. They fear the one who is clothed in majesty and in such power. And the throne is set upon a sea of glass. In Revelation, in uh, Exodus chapter 24, verse 10, Moses, Aaron, Nahab, and Abihu, and the 72 elders, they go up to the mountain to eat and to drink in the presence of God. And when they see the God of Israel, his feet appear upon a pavement of sapphire as clear as the sky itself. In Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 22, Ezekiel sees an expanse like an awesome gleam of crystal. And on that expanse, he sees the throne of God. In verse 26 of Ezekiel chapter one. The martyrs in Revelation chapter 15, verse 2, they're going to be standing on this sea. The sea is translucent glass. As it were, it, it indicates the absolute peace, stillness, and calm there is before the God of the universe. Psalm chapter 2 depicts the, the rebellion of man. And what does God do in heaven? 
He laughs. Uh, the throne in heaven never shakes. God does not fear man. He does not worry. He doesn't bite his nails. The Lord God reigns. So that is the throne. That is the throne. And the one seated on the throne. Now you have these angelic beings. The angelic beings. And around the throne there are these 24 elders. I'll tell you the... The elders are angelic, some form of angelic being or heavenly hosts. Why do I say this? Well, first, the thrones that they're sitting upon represent their authority. They have some authority, and this authority is granted or given to them by God. Throughout the Bible, that's what thrones stand for place of authority. And if you look at how they're clothed, they're clothed in white to depict their purity. And they also have crowns on their head. This is royal dignity has been bestowed upon them. Now, uh, uh, look at what they say in Revelation chapter 5. Listen to what they say. If you look at Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, and they, this is the four living creatures and the 24 elders before the Lamb, they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seal, for you were slain and purchased for God with, purchased for God with your blood men, from every tribe, tongue, and people, and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Now, I know your New King James Bible says us, but look at a parallel passage in Revelation chapter 14. In Revelation chapter 14, the 144,000 uh, who represent the complete and perfect number of God's people, Old and New Testament saints together. Revelation chapter 14, beginning at verse 1. Then I looked, and behold, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his name and the name of his Father written On their foreheads, they're sealed by God. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the sound of many waters, like the sound of loud thunder. And the voice which I heard was like the sound of harpists playing on their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders... So they're singing before these angelic beings. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been purchased from the earth. The elders, and we'll get into Revelation chapter 14 and convince you that the 144,000 are the same as a great multitude. So you have to take that as a given. But it's... uh, at this point, but you, you see how it's those who have been redeemed from the earth who can sing the new song. The elders are not redeemed from the earth, so they cannot sing the new song. So the, the textual issue is solved by the context of the book of Revelation itself. So these are uh, some form of angelic being. They were not redeemed, but stand in heaven, authoritative, holy, royal servants of God and of the Lamb. And they are witnesses to the divine transactions that are going to occur in heaven. 
they are going to see the Lamb enter into this throne room. And they are going to worship Him. Yet one day, we, we, believers, we will sit on thrones. That's what John tells us in the book of Revelation. We will be dressed in white. We too will receive crowns because of Him who loved us. We will gather together and worship the Lord in the very presence of this of these mighty these holy divine beings so the 24 elders then after the 24 elders if you look at verse 5 if you look at verse 5 you have the seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. What are these seven spirits? These that are here, uh, there's this fire, the fiery, burning. Well, if you look at Zechariah chapter 4, good Zechariah. It's in your Old Testament. If you go to Matthew and keep going back, Malachi, then Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 4. In Zechariah chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Then the angel who was speaking with me returned and roused me as a man who is awakened from his sleep. He said to me, What do you see? And I said, I see, and behold, the lampstand, all of gold, with its bowl on the top of it, and its seven lamps on it with seven sprouts belonging to each of the lamps which are on top of it. Also two olive trees by it, one on the right side of the bowl and the other on the left. And so he sees this olive tree. Now look at verse 6. Well, let's continue reading. Then I said to the angel who was speaking with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? So the angel who was speaking with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. And then he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying... Now, now listen to the answer. Because the question is, What are these lampstands? Do you not know what these are? Verse 6, Then he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. These candles are going to be burning bright as the candles did in the temple. And what they do is they represent the power and the might of God vis-a-vis by or through the Spirit of God. So here the Son calls John up into heaven and the Spirit takes him into heaven. And then the Spirit now is before the throne in the fullness of His power before God. Before God. So, the throne, the 24 elders, the Spirit represented by these torches. And then in verse 6, and in the center, 
And around the throne, four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. The first creature was like a lion, and the second creature like a calf, an ox. The third creature had the face like a man, and the fourth creature like a flying eagle. And the four creatures each, one of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within, and day and night. They do not cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. In the center and around the throne, possibly this indicates that uh, you, you have the elders, and in between the elders are these uh, four living creatures. And possibly it indicates that they were between the throne and between the elders. Ezekiel one fourteen says that these creatures are sent forth to do God's will. Therefore, the multitude of eyes that cover them cover possibly their wings, indicate the omniscience of God. God sends these four servants, possibly referring, referring to the four corners of the earth, to, to see everything that is happening. Over the four corners of the earth, these four living creatures... They watch and they see everything that is happening. Later in Revelation, these creatures summon the four riders who bring judgment upon the earth. They also give the seven bowls of God's wrath that will be poured out on the earth. As the cherubim guarded the way into the garden and were placed on the Ark of the Covenant and in the Holy of Holies, these angelic beings execute divine judgment and exalt in worship. That's what these beings do. The picture that is being developed, particularly now in these closing verses, as you see heaven erupt in praise, if you turn back to Revelation chapter 4, is that praise, worship, thanksgiving, it flows from the center of heaven. So the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him who sits on the throne, verse 9, who lives forever and ever. And the 24 elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne. And they worship Him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are You, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and because of your will they exist. Amen. If we just review the chapter, the various similes that are used and the descriptions of God himself and the things that are happening around the throne of God and the elders, and the description of the elders, and the four beings, and the descriptions of the beings, and, and, and everything that is uh, in the temple, the descriptions are drawn from the created world itself. The things that are created. Because this world is intended in a very real sense to display the glory of the Creator. The creation itself declares the glory of God. 
His handiwork is all throughout creation. So as John is taken up into heaven by the Spirit and he's given this this, uh, view of the temple, creation itself is used to describe this one. And since he is the source of creation, these angelic beings can do nothing but worship him. He is the Lord of creation. He is sovereign, holy, just, and pure. And what we'll see next week in Revelation chapter 5 is the one who redeems and the worship he receives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, grand, magnificent picture of heaven. We ask, Lord, that you would help us uh, to marvel and to awe at your beauty. Lord God, you created all things, and because of your will, they exist and were created. You are worthy of all of our praise to receive all of our glory, all of our honor, and all of our strength. Amen.